Hello everyone, I'm Zishan Shah and welcome to Z Interactive. If you want to render photorealistic scenes in 3D Studio Max, then you must use Arnold. Hasta la vista, right. baby. I'm talking about Arnold Renderer. 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 Yes, so you have to work on Arnold Renderer. And we will learn how to work on Arnold Render in this lesson number 18. So now let's see how Arnold Render works in 3D Studio Max. So I have this scene set up here where you can see a simple backdrop with three spheres and three cylinders. So first of all, let's see what we have. We have here a camera, which is a normal camera that you can create from the camera option from here a free camera or a target camera other than that we have some special arnold cameras like vr camera if you're using a vr scene for any 360 degrees video fisheye for a fisheye effect spherical or cylinder but if you want a normal one you can create a normal standard camera with any one of here, these properties okay so at this stage what i will do is that i will first of all try to render and see what do we have okay so i will go here in the render window okay and then i will make sure i have camera selected here and press render so once you do that you will get this scene here now this scene basically if you will see is basically not an arnold render this is a basic scan line render so we have to change our renderer from scan line to arnold first so I will go here in the render setup, okay, and then I will choose from here renderer to Arnold, and then I will press render here just to see what do we have. So you can see we have a very simple scene over here, okay. So there you can see the same thing here, which is appearing here. All these materials are basically scan light materials. These are standard scan line material. These are not the Arnold material. Okay. So before changing it to Arnold material, let's look into Arnold render settings. So I will cancel this and let's go to the settings here. So as soon as you will change your render setting to Arnold, you will get all these new properties. So in common, you have all those properties that we have used in the scan line render, which is same it doesn't change anything here so what i need to do here is that i will just go to the custom output size and make the output size a little smaller which is this one which is i think fine for this kind of render because we are only testing now the main thing is in the arnold renderer option in the arnold renderer option you get all these properties now what are these properties the first thing is the preview now what is the preview preview is if you go here in your default shading okay you will have all these options here okay which we have used in the last class and if you go in the standard so you will see a different kind of settings here there here you can see active shade using arnold what it do is that whatever you see inside the render okay it will turn your scene into the same property but interactively okay so it will render your viewport directly interactive rendering it uh, it's called so basically if i will go here active shade so it will render that so this is actually rendered so if i will do any changing so you can see it is interactively rendering so this setting is uh, about this viewport rendering now if i will change this right now it is minus three that means very low samples okay these are the samples and ray depth so very low samples mean it will render fast but it will be too noisy so you, as you can see in this scene if i will increase to three for example from negative to positive so what will happen is that it will not allow me the reason is that because you cannot increase it more than zero so you have to be uh, lower than zero okay so uh, if i will do minus one okay so you can see the rendering here has become a little bit slower here so now it will render a little bit slow but the quality will be better but i don't want 
a like very uh, high quality i want a low quality so i can work faster okay so i will keep it minus 3 now this is the camera samples if i will render you will see a lot of noise over here but if i will change it from 3 to 7 suppose so what will happen is that you can automatically see everything changes now if i will render the quality will be good but it will become slower because of the high quality okay so now you can see it is rendering little slow but the quality is now much more better okay now that is for the camera this is for the color okay or any diffused color or any shader you have applied so if you are on a good shader quality you will change this to maybe five this one to five specular for high specular quality transmission for transparency if you if you have a good transparency you can increase it to transparent uh, transmission to five uh, sss is for the like uh, like a scattered shading for skin shading and those things so if you want that to be high result you can increase that but in this case we will keep everything low to two so that we can render fast as we are testing only okay now as you know now these are the settings for the uh, for your Arnold render these are the main settings then here we have the adaptive sampling suppose if you are only testing so you can turn on the adaptive sampling okay you can maximize it or minimize it so it, what it will do is that it will give you a proxy of render like uh, like a good render quality but only for the view okay and if you want it to be more progressive you can turn on the progressive render but i don't want to use it so i will keep it uh, unchecked now here i have depth limits depth limits is basically for transparency for refractions usually you don't change a lot because these are the good values already but if you want a high quality so you can increase it more and if you want a low quality just for testing so you can reduce it but at this stage it's good and also it's good for the production stage as well now this is advanced this comes when you are using a high quality look depth for the skin so if you're using uh, like uh, like sub -sub uh, like subsurface scattering and you want to use a uh, like a uh, bump material on it or a uh, displacement like from texture xyz you can download very high quality of the displacement map so you can turn this on so it will make your bump automatically visible your displacement automatically visible for this part you can use it lock sampling pattern if you're using uh, like a rendering for animation so you have some noise so it to lock uh, to uh, to remove that noise uh, you'll do some changes and then you lock the sample pat sampling pattern so it will use the same pattern and reduce all the noise from the from every frame that you have okay now we have filtering in the filtering we have uh, different kind of options we usually keep gaussian otherwise you have other option as well okay these are different algorithm for rendering and they are a little bit different from each other but we'll stick to gaussian default and this is the size of it okay so two uh, pixels is fine it's good for production as well okay clamp aa samples basically cla uh, clamp aa samples are used when you are uh, making some indoor scene or any scene that have a secondary bounce light so you turn it on but now this everything is automatically set up so we don't have to worry too much about it now this is for environment suppose if you are using it ibl like an image based light like like we used in the last classes where we have hdri files so if you want to use the hdri file you can use it here but usually we can use that in the uh, arnold um, dome light okay so we don't have to worry about here this is the atmosphere suppose if you want to create a volumetric lights okay like a foggy lights or something like that so you can use those uh, materials here inside the atmosphere motion blur we already know we have used it in the last class so you can turn it on if you're animating so that you can have a motion blur so same exactly the same thing here this also we have used uh, okay but this is for the shutter speed okay for the shutter type for motion blur so you can change your shutter setting in case if you want high motion blur or low motion blur up to you now 
this is for geometry subdivision in here. Usually we don't change this one because this is for uh, subdivision. If you are uh, adding a lot of mass smooth on it or turbo smooth on your material, so to avoid any kind of, uh, you can say, crashing or, uh, you know, your computer becomes slower when you add a lot of uh, like subdivision. So instead of uh, like manually uh, applying that, you can apply it over here. Okay, but usually all these settings are as it is. We don't change it a lot. Only thing that we change most of the time is this, the general, and sometimes when you have adaptive uh, and progressive or depth limits. Okay, but most of the time this is the area where we want to do the changes. Now in the system, this is how you want it to render. Okay, using your computer memory. So first of all, the rendering uh, like uh, how you want it to render. So usually it is rendered in a spiral form. You can see these boxes. So when you start rendering, the boxes are formed in a spiral way if it is spiral. If it is uh, top to left, so it will start from here, okay, and then it will go like this in this direction. And then, you know, random it will, it will render, uh, randomly it will render. So it's up to you what you want to choose, but usually we keep spiral. And this is the size. Right now it is 64. So you can reduce it to whatever you want okay now these are some settings you want to check or uncheck so these are basically for support for error handling and those kind of things okay threads auto detect so we usually use the auto detect threads is basically for your processors okay how your processor renders now if you don't want to use processor here you have the processor which is cpu if you don't want to use cpu you can jump to gpu so it will use your graphical processor you want like, yeah, like, like your graphic card if you have the capability to do that okay and now once if you select that then you can choose your the name of it the memory you want to use over here and other other stuff now aovs if so you if you want to use aov shader so you can uh, give some maps over here so you can render some passes like if you want to see how the glossiness looks like only how the roughness looks like only how the specular looks like only so you can add those here okay so basically this is for testing for lighting purpose and all those things. Now if you have a noise, uh, if you have an, a lot of noise in your scene, so you can go to denoiser and then you can use the external denoiser settings over here or external uh, like, uh, like plugin for the denoising here. Archive basically is used for creating an archive of your rendering, best, like basically to create a batch so you can uh, further uh, like uh, you can use it or you can uh, use it in your future projects now diagnostics if you have some kind of error so you can handle all the errors over here okay so it can guide you uh, or sub sometimes you have error and these kind of things so you can ignore that error if you check this item okay so that it will bypass it and it will render it for you without going in details now we will keep all the settings as it is we don't want to change anything okay because we are just testing. Otherwise, it will be too slow. So if I will render right now, so you can see that this is the actual side that we will get. Now, first what we will do is that I will go here, okay, changes to active shade Arnold, so you can see the settings here. Let's change these materials to Arnold material. To change it to Arnold material, what we can do is that we can go to the of a material editor okay so i will click here and you will have this material on your scene so right now i have one material which i don't want i will just delete this one okay now as i have changed this to arnold so you know you can see i have an arnold in my list before there was no arnold now inside the arnolds you have aov for the aov the like i i told you about if you want to see only these kind of uh like render options for atmospheric effect for controllers like we did in the last class okay utilities okay and then volume we have for the volume rendering but the one that we are looking for right now is the surface so if you go in the surface you will see carpent uh clip geo lambert which is a normal one uh, layer shader matte okay standard hair if you're using your hair okay or standard surface so basically or two sided but uh, the most common used is the standard surface so i will drag the standard surface and drop it here now what uh, i will do here is that you can see there are a lot of different options here okay so 
the first thing what I need to do is that I will uh, apply this uh, like shader to my first sphere so this sphere I can apply this one right click here assign to selection and change the name to sphere one so you know this is the sphere one now once you are done what you can do is that you can drag one more here for sphere two okay and then we can drag one more here and we will call it sphere three now once you are done you can go a little bit down and this one we can create for the cylinder one so i will call this cell one okay that's a shortcut and this one to cell two and this one to cell three and then i'll go further down and add this one for backdrop so i will call this backdrop now i will not change a lot of things over here only the color i will change now if you will go in the sphere uh, one here which i created so you can see i have already applied here now first thing that we will do here is that we will change the color so we have here in each of these these are all same so we have here first thing the base color like in the scanline render uh, like materials you have default shader which is like a uh, diffuse color so diffuse color is, is in the scan line and here it is called the base color now it is 0 0.8 0 0.8 means the weight of it how much it how much it is affecting the surface so right now it's 0 0.8 so if you want completely 100% so you can change it to 1 now I will change this color to whatever I want maybe I can change it to blue color okay and you can see it is now bluish color okay I didn't did anything other than changing its color now I can do the same thing here in this two I will take this one changes this color its color to red something like that okay little like lightish red and then I can change this to one as well and apply on the selection okay sorry this is the one now I will go to here spare three and this one I will change it to some other color maybe green okay change to value to one and assign it so you can see how the it is affecting now I will take the cylinder one okay this is the cylinder one I can change this to maybe a yellowish color or any kind of a color here make it one assign it I will do the same thing here for this one purple okay and assign it change it to one now I will go to the other one here take this one okay change its color to something else maybe I want it to be a little bit brownish and also change its Now I will select the background, the backdrop. So here I will go, change the background to something like a teal sort of color, something like this, or turquoise, and assign this one. Okay, now I will deselect by clicking anywhere outside in the negative space and go in the first one. Now here what you are looking at is actually rendered already okay so if i will move it you can see that every time i move it render re-renders it okay if i will go here and the render frame window okay and try to render this one so you will see that it's the same result okay now i have all these materials here now what I need right now is the Arnold light because there is no light over here this is without the light whatever you are looking at is without the light to create the light you can go in the light setting 
In the light setting, we have here all these lights. So we will go in the Arnold light. And there is only one Arnold light. So we will go to the Arnold light here. Okay. And then drag it here somewhere. Here. So you have to first click and drag the target to whatever you want. So it will create a target and a source. So you can take the target from here from the explorer. So it will be selected and you can move wherever you want. And this one also you can move wherever you want. Okay. So right now my uh, direction is set up to local. I will change it to world so I can move it anywhere I want. Okay. So maybe somewhere here. Now if I will render it, let's see how it will look like. First let me click here. Okay. Now you can see it's quite a little different because the light is falling on it and there is a shadow. But you cannot see that shadow here. Because here when I have placed the light, it became standard again. Okay. So I have to cancel this and then go back to active shape. So usually it changes when you apply something new. Okay. Now you can see the shadow here. Okay. So now what we can do here is that let's change some light settings and see how the lights work. So in the Arnold you have only one light and you can go in the modify. Now why do we have one light in Arnold? The reason is that because it's all in one kind of a light. Okay. Now first thing is the general. You can see that it is turned on and it have target and it is targeted. So you can see the target. But if you don't want target, if you want to uh, have it as a free uh, like free form light, so you can uncheck the target. But I want it to be target, so I will keep it checked. You can turn it off or on from here. Okay, so as I turned it off, so you have noticed that it went off, and now I have just turned it on. Okay, so now it is on. So usually it takes a little time, like uh, if your computer is a little slow. Now down here we have a light type. At this stage, I am using a quad light which is like a uh, area light or a square form of a light now here we have distance type okay which works with the distance of light as far away your uh, like distance will be the light will be less or more depend like depending on that so this is how you will get the result from the distance light other than we have spotlight then you have here the quad which we use now quad is like a squarish form which we were using before but if you don't want it to be as in a square uh, like you know uh, form you, you want it to be in a disk form you can use disk or if you're making tube lights you can use cylinder okay sky dome light is like a skylight we used in the scan line then photometric light will give you a photometric result so you can apply any photo to it okay and that photo okay will be uh, will be casted from the light which is basically called IES okay so used a lot in the architectural. So once we will move to the architecture, how to model architecture in 3D Studio Max, there we will learn more into uh, more deeper. Now mesh is what you can apply a mesh. Okay, you can take any mesh, like suppose this one or this one, and it will turn into a light. Okay, so that you can do that by sim simply clicking down. Okay, but we don't want to do it here right now. So we will stick to the quad right now. So in the quad, you will see there is a spread. Now, what is the spread? Spread means how far you want the light to go. Usually, it is 1 by default, so we will keep it 1. Then we have quad X and quad Y, which is the size of the light. Right now, it is 100 centimeter by 100 centimeter, okay, which is a normal size. It's not too big. If I will increase the size of it, so what will happen? The light will get more brighter and the shadow will become more softer. Okay. But at this stage, I don't want to change it. I will come back to it. Okay. Now here, how round you want the shadow, how softness you want it. So you can change from this settings. Now let's move it here. Uh, this is for the shape rendering. If you want to uh, create a shape or a mesh or anything as a light, so you can turn these values on. Now we have here color intensity. Now the color that this light is using is white. Okay, so you can change the color to whatever you want. Suppose if I will change it to red, okay, so the light will be reddish, but I don't want that. Maybe if I will make it pinkish, so you can see a little 
less quality of that will be applied over here now as you can see now but i don't want this i can make it white okay now this is all white now you can also change it to preset preset gives you pre-made lights type here at this stage we have daylight okay we can change it to uh incidescent light so incidescent light is basically like it uh you can say like a bulb or something like that okay so it will uh, show you the, some yellowish kind of color okay so if i will change it to fluorescent this will it will be something like a tube light okay so or you can say something between tube light and the uh like a tungsten so a, a different kind of result so you can see the light type will be something like this okay and there are a lot of lights here daylight okay if you can change the daylight it will be changed here and if you want more other results so there are a lot there are uh, mercury type of a light here and so many things but i will keep it the light else what you can do is that you can go to the kelvin which is a temperature control okay so if i will reduce this one so you can see the light will become more and more warmer if i will increase this one so you can see the light will become more and more cooler okay so this is how you can work as a temperature controller if you want your light to have a texture like a uh, uh, you can say uh, external file so you can go to texture and you can click here and bring that for like texture file here okay for example if i will click here so i can go to seam material or uh, here i will search for the basically any kind of material i can uh, choose file from out uh, like and bring it here but let's see how what we have at this stage here so i have here some uh, textures file here let's see what we can use we have here checkerboard so if, if i will use checkerboard here so it will create a checkerboard type of a feeling okay so as you can see the light got changed so you can use your uh, external lights here but let's stick to the original color light now here is the main thing the intensity of light okay now this one is exposure and this is intensity intensity is the brightness of the light and exposure is how much light you want your camera to capture so in the intensity what i can do is that i can go in the intensity and change it to something around five okay and this one or maybe three okay so i don't want it to be too bright and i want exposure to be 12 i don't want it to fall or i don't want it to be more like visible to the camera so this is fine for me at this stage okay now here is the samples the quality of the light so you can increase it if you want okay if you increase it a lot so your rendering will become slower so it's up to you what you want here now you can see it became a little darker because of the exposure okay now exposure is 12 that's why it got uh, darker now there is one more option here normalize now what does the normalize do if the light is too bright or too dark so it takes the average amount of it and make it to the real world size so if i will turn it on so what will happen is that you cannot see anything the reason is that now it is in the norm, uh, normalized mode so i have to increase a lot of these settings to get my uh you can say uh, like result back so we don't want to change it right now because we have already a normal uh, like light setup now if i will go back here and try to change the quad x and quad y which is the size of the light so you will see that it will start becoming normal okay so i can increase it more and more if you want and then you can have a more uh, light here plus you will have little softer shadow so now you can see the sh uh, shadows are becoming little softer let me make it thousand so you can see the shadow are more softer now so just notice the shadow it's more softer if i will make it five thousand the set so the shadows will become more softer okay but the light will be too bright so what i can do here is that okay i will reduce the intensity maybe one will be enough okay when is fine and exposure i can change it to eight maybe so in this case i have now balanced between the light 
Okay, now you can see I have a good amount of light and softer shadow. So this is how you can combine the settings. You can combine the settings of intensity and the quad X and quad Y if, uh, if you want a softer shadow. So as bigger the light will be, it will be too bright, but the shadows will be uh, softer. But when the lights become uh, brighter, so you have your intensity, intensity and exposure to control it. Okay. So in some cases, normalized will work, but in this case, it, it will not work as it is normal here. Okay. Now, other things we have here is the shadow, the color of the shadow. Right now, it's black. So we do usually keep it black. But if you don't want it to be too harsh, so you have intensity, uh, like density of the uh, shadow. So maybe if it is too hard, for, uh, too harsh for you, so you can make it 0.5. So rarely you can see that. Okay. Usually we, you do that if you have a surface like a glass because glass does not cast a very dark shadow. Okay. But in this case, we will keep it as it is. And these are the contributions. Contributions means like if you don't want a lot of light on the diffuse color, you can reduce it to maybe zero. So the light will not affect on the diffuse color or specular or any other things. Okay. So this is how you can change to this. Like suppose I have some specular here. So if I will change the specular to zero, okay, so it will affect that part. So now you can see there is no specular because the spec the light is not affecting specular. It is zero. Now I will turn back it to one. So now you can see that I have a lot of specular. But if you think specular is too high, so maybe you can reduce the specular to 0.5. So you can see the specular is there, but it's not too harsh now. It's a little lower or 0.1 maybe. So you can see still see the specular, but a little bit lower. So this is how you can change it. Okay. Suppose if I will change the diffuse to zero, so you can see everything is black and white. I cannot see anything there because there is no diffuse color. So I will change it to one. If I will make it point 0.1, so you can see the light is becoming darker, but the speculars are there. The reason is that the light is itself is bright, but only the color is becoming darker because they are becoming blacker and blacker. But I will keep it one. Uh, camera basically if I will make it zero so if you I'm using a uh, like a Arnold camera so what will happen is that it will become a more like a uh, like an art like a uh, black hole scene because the light will be not affecting on the camera okay now one thing here we can do is that let me take this camera from this viewport and delete it okay and then let's go in the camera mode and Let's make a physical camera. Now I will take the physical camera and I will make the physical camera from the front viewport. Okay, so once the camera is done, uh, uh, like let's do it from the left viewport because you need a source and then you need a target. So I will drag and drop it here. And once it is done, I can go in here from uh, perspective, I will change it to physical camera. So you can see that. And then you can zoom here, or maybe you can move this one, okay, to closer, very just like this. It's too close. Let me move it a little bit far, and let's move it a little bit side. And the reason we changed it from a normal camera to a physical camera, because physical camera actually uses the same uh, values that a real camera uses. Okay, so the result is more realistic. So if you want to use a good combination of a camera, so you can use a physical camera. And if I will go in the modify section, you can see there are a lot of different kind of uh, like settings, just like you have in a real cameras. So you have here lens. You have lens uh, sensor here, so you can choose to any kind of uh, realistic lens, maybe a Canon lens I want to change it to, okay? Or I don't want to do that, maybe I will keep it as it is full frame, okay? Then you have here motion blur, you can turn on the motion blur from here, but I don't have a motion blur, so I will keep it as it is, okay? So exposure control, you can do that on your camera itself. It is too uh, bright for you this scene so you have exposure control here which is six if you will see here we have exposure now you can change the exposure more or less okay or there is an ISO setting you can go in the ISO setting which is basically image optimization uh, like sensor settings if I will reduce it okay 
so it will make the scene go a little bit darker okay and if i will increase it the scene will go a bit little bit brighter so let me turn it off and on to you can see now the result usually it takes a little time to uh, uh what you call this uh, to freshen up so i have to turn off the active shading and turn it on okay so if you think this is too uh darker so you can do one thing you can go back in the settings okay and then you can change it to normal as it was before okay or maybe a little bit maybe 500 i can change it so let me go here turn it on and then turn it on again okay. so now i have this kind of a setting okay so this is how you can do a lot of changes in the physical camera properties and you will have a lot of different options here okay you can try any one of these here and then you can see you have a depth of field effect okay just like we did in the last uh, class okay so you can turn on the depth of field from here exactly the same thing that we have okay and then we have perspective control lens distortion and so many things in the lens distortion you can uh, use any kind of like distortion okay and so many things do you you will have here okay now using a physical camera or any other cameras will give you an option of using it uh, like a ornal property so whatever object you have or camera or light you have you can select that and click on the ornal property so that ornal property will be applied on that so i have a physical camera which have now the ornal properties now if i will go in the cameras so whatever changes here i have is the arnold camera rent uh, like uh, the specified changes so if i will change uh, like click it on i have more other like changes here i can do that okay if i will turn it off so it will be fine at mm -hmm. this stage okay so this is how you can apply motion blur you can also apply on it and different kind of other things okay so now if i will click on this light you can see there is a this area uh, like a uh, box appearing the reason the box is appearing because the size is now 5000 by 5000 before we were not able to see that okay so that's fine now now one more thing i can do here is that let's uh let's apply some kind of a changes in these textures first of all let's change this uh backdrop okay so if i will go to my uh, materials okay go a little bit down here select this one okay uh, this is base color let's change the base color to one uh, to this uh, weight to one okay now you can see this is quite reflective and there is a lot of specular on it okay usually backdrops are not uh, like glossy they are like a paper or cloth so how we can change that after the base color let's close the base color as we have done we have specular specular is the amount like you can see this uh, light amount which is falling that is the specular in 3d studio max and arnold basically the specular by default is one which is quite high so if you don't want that you can reduce it if you don't want it at all so make it zero and once you will do that it will be uh, updated here now you can see there is no specular here it's like a paper okay but if you want it you can keep it one okay it's up to you so for me i will keep it zero i don't want to change it okay now once it is done there is no other changes i want on it okay i want to keep it as it is here as a flat sort of a clothes like sort of a thing okay now you have other settings but we will apply on the other parts now let's take this first sphere so go to this first sphere okay which is the blue one now here we have specular which is one so okay i want it to keep it one but what if i will make it 0.5 so you can see the highlight on this is now changing okay what if i will make it zero so it will become without any specular what if i want 0.1 so there is a specular but it it is too low that you cannot see it okay 
so if i will make it maybe five or oh, sorry it, oh, i cannot go beyond five so the maximum is one okay so this is how i will get the uh with me like a specular it's updating right now let me update it because this is not one this is 0.5 which i changed it so let me go back here now it's back to one now what is the roughness roughness is how rough you want your specular to be right now it is 0.2 if i will change it to a one suppose so you can see nothing the reason is that the size of your specular has become so big that it's not visible so if i will change it to 0.8 okay you can see that some highlight is coming back let's do it 0.5 so you can see the specular is back but see how soft it is okay so this is how you can increase or decrease if you want a matte object okay with a little bit glossiness maybe you can increase it to 0.7 okay so you can still see that okay but it's not that visible okay if you want to be uh, if you want your roughness to be more sharper so you can make a point one you can see how sh sharp it is okay very glossy now there is one here which is metalness now what does the metalness do metalness increase as its name suggests metalness makes it reflective if i will make it to 100% like one means 100% okay so you can see now it is reflecting all this all these materials reflecting this one this one and other but the color is blue so you cannot see so what we can do we can change the color to white maybe so now you can clearly see so it is reflecting the uh, your light okay this uh, uh, backdrop these materials which are next to it okay all these are appearing here so this is how you can make it uh, like a uh, reflective so if you don't want it to be too reflective maybe i will change it 0.5 okay and change this to maybe back to blue color so you can see it is reflective but not too much okay not like a mirror so that you can change here now next to the reflect uh, metalness you have index of refraction which is used for basically uh, op like a opaque objects like transparent sort of objects okay so here it will not work as it is as metal this is not a transparent object so let's take this one okay and we have we can turn this one into a opaque or a transparent object to do that first of all what we need to do is we cannot make it transparent unless its opacity is turned uh, like you know changed so if you will see here we have uh, internal reflections and indirect uh, uh, like specular okay which is ba like basically for uh, the out uh, like uh, refractions or sorry reflections from the indoors or from the outdoor like a hdr file so we don't have to worry about this one okay uh, let's before making it transparent let's check one thing we have here anisotropy what is the anisotropy basically if i will change this anisotropy to something around one just see what happens to the specular uh, shape so if i will change it to one okay let me refresh this one so you can see the shape of the specular is became has become a little bit wider that's what the anisotropy do so basically it spreads your specular size so if it is low like maybe 0.3 okay and if we go and refresh this one so you can see that it is spreading but not as it was before so maybe if i will make it 0.6 okay so you can see that it is getting wider and wider so if i will make it 0.8 okay so let me refresh so you can see it is more wider now and also i can rotate this uh, specular now uh I have this rotation part here. Let's make it 0.9 so it is more uh, widely spread. Okay. Let me refresh it. So you can see it's more widely spread. Now I can rotate it by reducing the rotation. Okay. So if you will, you see, if I will make it something like this, you can see how it is rotated. It is rotated in this form. 
So you can also rotate this one and do these kind of changes to it. Basically, this looks good if you are working on a uh, brush type of a uh, metal. Okay. So if I will go here, change this to white. Okay. And to change the metalness to one. So you can see it looks like more like a brushed material here. Okay. So base color, let's make it a little bit grayish. Okay. Like a brush sort of thing. And maybe if I will, if you will change the roughness, if you will add some roughness to it, uh, here. Okay. So you can see that it's kind of look like a brushed, uh, material or something like that. Okay. So now instead of 0.9, if I will make it to 0.7, so you can see that it more looks like a brushed material or like a metal. Okay. So this is if you want this, if this kind of illusion, so you can give it to it. But I don't want this effect on this one. Maybe I can apply on this one. So I can click this one and assign this here. And if I will go here and take the sphere 3 and assign this one to sphere 3. Okay. So that I can have a, a fresh start. Okay. Now let's see about the refraction, what we were uh, working on. So refraction or transparency works with the transmission. So right now my transmission here is general is zero. So if I will change it to one, okay. So you can see that I can see through. Okay. So I can see through this part as it is appearing here. Now my index of refraction at this point is how much? It is 1.5. So this is what, this is the index of how refractive you want your glass to be. Okay, right now you can see this as it is a marble or a, you can say as a, uh, like a crystal ball, something like that. So if I will change it to 1.34, suppose, okay, let me refresh this here so you can see the result quite. So you can see that it's becoming more refractive. But what if I will make it something around 1.8? So you can see the refraction has become a little bit lesser. So this is how you will do that. But if you're confused how much refraction I want, so there are a lot of different websites where you can go. For example, just on Google, you can type index of refraction list and you can see a lot of websites will come up and it will give you, for example, if this, I will go to this website, okay, pixel and poly. And here you can see a list of index of refraction. Suppose if I want to create a normal glass, okay. So the index of refraction is how much? 1.5. So I can change it to 1.5. If I'm making an ice, so it is 1.309, okay. So this is how you can change these. So maybe I wanted to make it as a glass. So what I can do is that I can go in the index of refraction and change it to 1.5. So it will become like a glass ball. Other thing what I can do is that I have here thin wall. So what will happen is that it will kind of become a thin wall, like not a, uh, like a solid ball. So if I can turn it on, like it will become something like this, like a bubble or, or, or sort of thing. Okay. Or if I don't want that, I have a depth here. So I can change the depth. Okay. So as in, uh, I will increase it. So the depth of the, uh, of that, uh, liquidity inside it or glass amount inside it will will change okay but let's keep it zero right now it will take a lot of time to render now what is the exit to background exit to background is basically uh, use your background color here and use it as an exit color okay but uh, at this point it uh, it will not work as we don't have, we have a very flat background or sort of, like sort of thing and also you need a good GPU as well to render it from here. But in this case, it's all fine, but the background is basically uh, showing here and you can see the color is now a little bit out, out uh, the outline of the color is a little changed. Okay, so that's what the exit uh, to background color used for. Basically for your diamonds, if you're creating a diamond, that will work a lot for that, okay. Now here we have advanced. So you can add extra all uh, like roughness to your characters and all those kind of things here. Now this is a scattering. If you want to use a scattering, okay, like a sub uh, like subsurface scattering. 
so you can use here for example let's take this one okay uh, which is our first cylinder and let's work on the scattering part here okay now scattering here basically you can see that I have here a uh, scatter amount okay and then I can change the color of it and I have the uh, like uh, anistropy of that but the subsurface is kind of uh, right now zero so let me make it let me make it something around one okay so you can see there is a white color here what is this white this is the subsurface taking it uh, which is which it's taking from here so if I will change it and to any color maybe to reddish so you can see that it is there but it is showing me hundred percent red color because it is one what if I will make it 0.5 okay so what it is doing is that it is taking this red color and putting it inside as somewhere as a skin now how this can uh, be shown much more in an easier way if I will say let me take the light here okay and increase its uh, intensity or exposure I guess a little bit more so you can see the result more uh, like clearly okay so if I will make it maximized this viewport and change it to active shading so you can see the more better result here okay so this is how you can see of half of it is yellow and from inside you can see that it is bringing that uh, red outside okay if I will increase it more so you can see much more better what it is doing okay so I have the scale the size of this as well okay if I don't want it to be a lot so I can change it to 0.2 something like that okay so it will be less and I can change the radius of it how much it wa I want it to affect in the whole area that I can change from here now at this point I have a type so I have three different types diffusion will give my uh, like give the result as as this uh, random walk you have already seen random walk 2 will some will be more harsher so these are different kind of algorithms here okay now let's go back to the normal view here smaller view so you can see the whole thing now let's work on this uh, cylinder which is the purple one okay now here what we can do is that I can apply a coat now what is a coat coat is basically a secondary color over a color this is basically you can use inside your uh, car paint tool or, or those kind of things so if I will change it to something let's first of all let me change my light back to normal as it was before because it is too bright now I don't want it to be too bright Now, I can go in this amount. Let let me make it ten. This will be fine. Now, here I can go in the clear coat. Right now, the color is white, but the value is uh, zero. So, if I will make it 0.5, okay. So you can see here. Let me activate it. You can see a sudden whiteness is appearing here like a secondary white specular is appearing over here okay so the roughness is 0.1 which is sharper I can change it to whatever I want maybe I can make it 2.2 and the color if I will change it to bluish okay so now you can see that there is a blue sort of thing appearing over here so that's a secondary uh, you can say um, like a, uh, a kind of a, a specular level on it usually you use this inside your uh, your uh, like a car paint now here as you know this is transparent we have transmission here okay so we use the transmission basically uh, if we will go to this uh, shader here okay so we have here this transmission which is one and we have here thin wall if I will turn on the thin wall so I can change the setting of the thin wall from here 
okay so whatever changes i want i can change now if i will make it one so you can see the size of the wall is now one maybe i can make it 0 0.5 0 0.1 or maybe zero keep it as it is or 0 0.01 okay something like that and then you can change the color of like uh, index of refraction of this one as well okay right now it's 0 0.5 maybe if i will make it two so it will change a little bit here from inside okay if i will make it one just like that okay let's go to this cylinder now each of these objects can turn into a light how we can turn that into a light we can go in the emission okay inside the emission you can change the value you can increase the value if i will increase this value to one okay so you can see it will start emitting light over what kind of light a white light but if you want you can change this uh, its color to something like a yellowish okay or maybe reddish so you can see now it is emitting a red light okay so this is how you can increase if i want more maybe i can increase this value a little bit more okay and then let me refresh this clearly so you can see it is emitting light and it's going on the other uh, parts as well okay so this is how you can increase or decrease your light amount here as much you want it's up to you so it will start emitting lights this is good if you are using a screen for a television and you want to show that on the television and those kind of things now we also have special features like opacity you can uh, use a opacity map over here like in black and white map okay and then it will be only a, the black and white will only show the your textures and other part won't show it for example i can use an opacity file which i have so i can click here okay and then i have to search for the uh, the bitmap which you can find in the maps in the sorry general and then bitmap here if i double click it will ask you where it is so here i have this file and you can see that the blacks are the star and the white is the background so what will happen here is that if I will choose this one, so whatever is the white will show the shader and whatever is the black will not show anything, it will be transparent. So if I will open it up, okay, and you can see that how it is appearing over here. Let me turn off the emission, okay, so you can see that how it is showing. Let me maximize this, okay. So if you will notice that the parts that are uh, white okay are is shown like the background but the part which was black is not showing so you can see that i can see through it let me rotate this cylinder so you can see more clearly so this is how you will get the uh, your actual result with this okay now where it goes it goes automatically like this what if i don't want this black to be the star and white to be background i want uh other way around so what i can do is that here in this image file okay which i have it here i can uh you uh, like uh, inverse it okay to inverse it you have different other options here in this image there is a output here you can go in the output in the output you will see all these settings and there is a invert option so if you click on invert the black will become white the white will become black so as soon as i will click it so you can see that this means the stars have become white and the background has become black so that's why we can see now stars and not the background itself this is uh, a few of the things about the Arnold. So there are uh, pretty much more settings, but these are the main settings you should know. So you can explore other uh, like settings or other uh, Arnold materials to know uh, how they work. But uh, as we are moving in this like, tutorial to the next classes, we will keep on learning things on, uh, you know, step by step. But this is how actually it usually works in the Arnold and uh, other things like uv unwrapping uv mapping is same as we have studied like before it's the same technique here okay 
as I said, for uh, like extra settings, what you can do is that you can uh, take any of these your objects and you can go inside your uh, modifier list and you can apply over here Arnold properties. And when you apply the Arnold properties here, you can do some kind of changes, like if you want a motion blur or any uh, any other things. Okay, so you have a lot of things here. For example, in general properties, I want to change the visibility of this. I don't want this to be appear to the camera, so I can uncheck the cam, uh, like to the camera, and it will be not visible. You can see now it's not there anymore. Okay, so if I deselect this, you can see it's not there. The reason is that because it is um, hidden from the camera. Okay, so these kind of things you can do that. I don't want uh, my uh, material to have a specular or anything. I can change from here. And then same for shadows, same for other like same for other things. And then you have thing for the subdivision. If you don't want to apply mesh smooth on it, okay, you only want to see mesh smooth um, or subdivision when you're rendering. So you can turn on from here. Uh, on it will be only uh, like a show the subdivision when it is rendering. Other things here you can see uh, is, is basically here for the lights. Also, you have some properties for the shadow also for particle system and like so many other things you have here okay so i hope you have learned uh, like from this class about the arnold if you have liked this tutorial so please uh, you can hit the like button please support my channel okay uh, share it to your friends ask them to subscribe if so and if you have not also subscribed yet please subscribe to my channel uh, hit the black, like bell icon so I will be uploading more and more tutorials and also bonus tutorials, special classes, tips and you know uh, short tutorials as well. So to stay in touch you can click this bell icon so you will get all the notifications uh, time to time and there will be a lot of good stuff coming up. So thanks for supporting a lot and keep on supporting me. I hope you are learning a lot from my channel. So guys, take care. I will meet you in the next class.